Well, good morning, everybody, again, and welcome back to the uh, 2018 Mercure City of Perth Masters, coming to you live again from the Dewar's Centre in Perth, Scotland. I'm Rob no Niven, and with me this morning is Alan Chalmers. Good morning, Alan. Morning, Robin. Nice early start for us this morning, but uh, looking forward to a good game on our screens, as well as seven other good games across the sheet. Yeah, we've got a real blockbuster this morning. Um, Team Oulsrud, well known in these parts. They've uh, been supporting this competition for over 20 years now. Very experienced, very successful. Uh, playing against one of Scotland's most uh, successful and uh, experienced teams in uh, Ewan McDonald from Inverness. We've just seen the, the practice slides and the, the draw shot challenge, which will determine Hammer, last stone advantage, with uh, Team Norway getting the first throw. <laughs> Great coverage we've got this week from the World Curling Tour in conjunction with our sponsors, Mercure Hotel and uh, Perth and Kinross Council, Perth Honda. So, yeah, vastly experienced. The great warm up for the uh, Team Norway this year. They're obviously on their way to. Uh, the Olympics in February, but they've got a lot of curling to do before that. They are three weeks in the road with, uh, off to the Continental Cup after this competition. So next week they'll be flying out to Vegas for the Continental Cup, followed by uh, the first Grand Slam of the year in Canada. Tom's playing the intern draw. Both teams needing to draw the button just to determine hammer. Yeah, pretty good attempt. That's right on the, right on it. No need to measure that one. Just enough. <laughs> it's great having the, the microphones on the teams. Will hopefully Thomas uh, and Torger Nergard will be giving us uh, some uh, English in their uh, tactical <laughs> chats so that we can pick up what they're saying. That'll certainly, be a big help. So if you pin now, it's still the fifth before the game that counts. Obviously, uh, Ewan McDonald is uh, vastly experienced. Three Olympics and um, multiple worlds. Yeah, two, two, three world championship wins under his belt. Yeah. Not playing as much now, but uh, from his game last night, you saw you, they can still play at top level. They're uh, Ewan Byers' uh, normal lead, usual lead, is uh, injured, so they brought in Callum Kinnear from Perth, who's uh, a real talent. Uh, we know him very well, Alan, and uh, we see him every Wednesday night playing here, and uh, he's certainly one for the future, and it's great that Ewan's brought him in for this competition to give him a taste of the top-level curling. Yeah, great experience for him again, going to play in the event against Olympic-bound teams. What a, what, a, what a great experience for him. Yeah, seven Olympic teams. We said that last night. It's great uh, to get the best of the world all here, but seven out of ten Olympic teams is terrific. Um, it will be the only t only time there's that many of the Olympic teams all uh, in one competition. <laughs> so there's Team Olsrud, uh, Thomas uh, Olsrud, uh, Torger Nergard, uh, Christopher Svey and uh, Havard Pedersen. They've been together for a long time. Team McDonald, Ewan McDonald, uh, David Edwards, Duncan Fernie, and uh, Callum Kinnear. So if you say Callum's brought the average age of the rink down. <laughs> All eight of them. <laughs> Correct. So this first one's just a practice swing, just to uh, let them have a, a throw down this path that they'll be throwing their eventual stone. Polish, polishes up the track and uh, gives the skip a feel for the weight. Hoping his next one will be lighter than that. Gives them a wee split on it. Do you think I hit him more, Dave? I think that was probably my. A. So it's, it's at least 10, eh? So getting the split right, getting the ice right, they've got to cover the button to uh, give themselves a, a chance of hammer. 
all these teams playing this morning won their opening game yesterday afternoon or yesterday evening so this is this is still the A road of a triple knockout competition you have three lives once you've lost your third game over the weekend that's you done but uh, these guys won't be thinking about that just yet they've got a chance to progress through to the final eight with a win this morning yeah, the beauty of the A road, B road, C road format is if you win all your games, you play less games, you, you get straight to the finals a lot quicker to the playoffs. Um, it can be pretty brutal if you're in the B or C roads. You might have to play four games in a day, uh, but you're still in the competition, still on the ice. I think he looks a little bit hot here, is he? Oh, no, he's good. Needs to curl. Yeah, pretty good attempt, good, but not good, good enough. Attempt. And Thomas says it was so good, it was going to have to be exceptional to beat it. But uh, pretty good effort from Ewan. So let's hope that's uh, an indicator of two teams that on game. top form. Yeah, probably just a little bit heavy. His line was probably right. They took a little bit more ice, and uh, of course, it didn't finish as much as they thought. But. Du ser, det er ikke noe stort problem for oss i det hele tatt. Vi klarer det, men du ser, det er klokka her. Hva holder deg fint gående? Det blir fin flyt. Ja, det er kanskje en bit av en refleksjon av to team som har over de årene vært veldig vanlig mot hverandre. Men de har tatt forskjellige veier. Ewan's team har selvfølgelig tatt det enklere. De har andre livsbalanser for å prøve å akkommodere. Mens Thomas Rolsrud's team er totalt dedikert til curling. Really professional curlers from uh, the start of September right through till April. They're uh, totally de dedicated to traveling the world just to curl. Uh, the Scottish lads here have all got families and businesses to operate and run, and they try and fit the curling round about it. it. Doesn't make them any less more talented or skillful, it's just uh, the balance of life. Yeah, very difficult balance. And Thomas is team lucky to have supportive partners and work colleagues and things. To allow them as much time off, but uh, the schedule's getting more and more demanding every year as well. Yeah, and the calendar getting more stretched out too. So uh, in the past it would be a November through March calendar, and now it's uh, looking more like uh, summer curling could be possible. Curling used to stop when the potato uh, planting season. <laughs> started and finished when the harvest was on. So underway, Callum Kinnear's first stone of the first end. Looks like it's just going to drift into the rings. To the forefoot now. I think they may be called that. I think uh, they'll be expecting a corner guard from Team yep. Norway, so let's not force the play too much too early. Yeah, they've been very consistent in terms of their performance over the years. They've only won this competition once or twice. Um, mm -hmm. But certainly uh, qualify for the quarterfinals, yeah, the playoffs. Regular attendees on the Sunday, aren't they? They're yeah. usually their quarter semis. Then at that point, it comes down to luck of the draw, I think, as to who you get maybe at that point. And it kind of keeps them up there. There's a huge amount of WCT ranking points available just because of the strength of fuel multiplier here this week. So these guys are still thinking about keeping themselves in the top 10 in the world, which gives them slam invitations. And uh, and the top events in Canada really only go to the top teams in Europe. So they're all working hard to keep the uh, keep themselves up in the rankings. Hi, boys. Go on, Dave. Go, 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 go. Go on, go, go, go. Right to the death. Go, 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 go. Okay. Yeah, Very put good. the guard up. Nice and tight, though, as well. That's the difference. We've seen how much draw there can be here at Perth. That, uh, if the guards are too long, you can just come right round them at hack weight. Yeah, the game we watched last night, the guards were never really in the right position for the Norwegian yep. team to Hi. use. Hi. Kyle Smith is able Hi. to pick them off fairly Hi. cleanly. That's a much better guard by Cal. Damn. It's pretty good here. You can see Quarter Stone is an outside chance at Hack Weight to just get a, a bump off this and behind the corner guard. Yeah, lovely stone. Oh, that's as good as you'll ever get. So 
So there we had uh, Team Scotland thinking that they were pretty well set up with a close guard and they could only see a quarter of it. They've removed it from play and roll behind the corner guard that they've put up. Of course, the same shot that's on in reverse. Out turn for uh, Team Scotland's come down and Duncan Fern will be trying to catch half stone of the one behind the corner and roll into the centre again. Maybe a wee bit down the centre line to start with. It will curl at the end. Gave, gave him a lot more ice, I think, uh, for this out turn shot than Thomas had given. Uh, coming the other way. He obviously knows his own players, how they throw them. Speck has played it without actually getting the roll back. I think. Yeah. yeah, good shot. Good throw, That's about all he could do at that weight. He had to make sure he was removing the red. It would have been worse if he just popped it deeper behind the corner guard. So he had to. Rule one was remove the red. After that, we might get a roll. Thomas just indicating what weight for this hit weight for Christopher Say to be playing. It's hard to describe yep. that, Luke. Hard! Hard, Luke! Please! Hard! Seems hard to be curling off the centre line. Hard, hard, hard! Hold the arm! Hold the arm! Hold the arm! He's, swept. he's played it. Caught it, but he's rolling out the shooter. Maybe just lighter than he was wanting. You know, play out turn here just so that uh, if he only gets half round it again, the option of the corner guard isn't on. So it's a good call. Loads of ice. Look at that. They're obviously expecting a big swing from this side. So get around this tight guard. Put the pressure back on. Norwegian team again. Maybe needs a hair. Although they've not been playing a lot of competitions this this season, Team McDonald, they've all been throwing a lot of stones. They have been working hard in between uh, in between games. Uh, I know Duncan Fernie's been in at Perth here. David Edwards, Aberdeen. They may not have trained as a team, but they yeah, that's just not had the uh, not the curl. The weight wasn't that bad. It, they had to leave it to try and get the uh, to get the curl. Maybe just looked like. A bit too much ice. Just over iced and possibly yeah. but still learning their way a little bit. First end, right out on the frost area to take, it would be slightly colder ice. <laughs> Anybody see a sheep go? Straighter line just catching them out on that side of the sheet there, I think. Yeah, it's not curling as much as the other side. No, definitely not. I think maybe just uh, less stones up and down it, not coming until the maybe the pebble getting polished off, it will develop a curl. Cut his eye slightly, but not by not much. By much. Maybe felt Duncan and maybe just put it out there. And Dave Edwards, maybe just a cleaner throw on the out turn, he'll not block it back. Just waiting for it to curl. I don't think it started to go yet. No, it'll go at the end. It'll all depend on the weight. It just looks a little bit heavier than uh, than Duncan's. It's on the tee line, I think. Just didn't get the big finish. Good effort. That lovely weight. Yeah, probably just three inches ice too much still. But they, they don't want to be wrecking that centre guard. It's quite an important stone where it is. It's going to dominate this end. I don't think you'll be able to get a roll off the inside. More of a hack weight here, just yep. popping it back. Yeah, we've seen oh. some of these just go yesterday. Yeah, I think if you play those down weights. Worried about this one, there's that yet send a guard to try and bypass. Yeah, I think he's on the guard, isn't he? Oof, great shot. Yeah, good sweep. They held that a long time. But as we can see, he couldn't actually get to the inside of the no, stone. So he could have done, I think. Yeah. 
to get the inside here, they're going to have to play a bit lighter than Torger Nergard's uh, hack weight there. So, And with a chunk of ice, this is more ice than Torger got. No more than hack. See, that's a lot lot wider line than uh, Nergard style got. of throw, certainly. This one's He's not getting the inside of this one. So if you're not getting the inside, make sure you roll it to the wing and get it out of the way. Take it early. Yeah, I think they were scared if they only half stoned it, they might not have removed the, the red from play. It was a good way. Same shot. And Thomas has indicated this time he wants to roll it to the wing. He wants to get away from that dangerous centre. He's already thinking about how am I going to get my last stone in if, uh, if they get half round here. Maybe just a springy release out the hand. It's kept it higher. Ah, good shot. Yeah, both teams just continue to nose the stone. This one's getting further away, but um, it's not getting any easier to get in behind this guard. Run the risk of dropping the weight and maybe just taking off. The one thing is, it's the stone's getting higher and higher out of the ring, so... Um, if uh, Team McDonald make the hit and roll, it, it's making the run back easier all the time. So I don't think either team will be too distressed at the moment. It's a fairly controlled end. It'll be a hard steal from here for Team McDonald, but at the same time, doesn't look like much chance of a two as long as he makes his two shots. Yeah. Half a roll. Yep, slightly lower than the previous ones, but still, and that, and that pace just didn't take much impact. So, yeah, it's amazing. We've seen uh, six attempts at the same shot here, and uh, nobody's really managing to get that inside roll. But I think they're just experienced here; that they're aware that. Um, if you leave it too late, it, it will take off, and any flick on that guard is uh, is not good for Oldwood here because he, he's actually still in the position for the blank. So I think he's playing for the blank now. I think yeah. He's hoping that Ewan's final shot will do something similar, and he'll just be able to half stone them. Yeah. The counter out and yeah. move on to N2. Oh, oh. Again, it's just that slight into oh. out. Oh, oh. Hold on. It comes down coming but it's only really a nose um, yeah. he wants to leave it somewhere that makes the uh, blank very difficult I'd like to leave it right behind the yellow and that, that although the blank is still on he's got to make a harder shot than a simple half stone peel out the house yeah you know Talking about changing, maybe rolling all the way behind the red. Yeah. Which would make a harder drive back for just Thomas Olsrud, but um, it would also leave a lot more of the eight foot if he chose just to play the draw. Yeah. Nice having a young man in the team to do the sweeping up front. <laughs> That's exactly why he's been chosen. Right? <laughs> He'll always be in the inside line for the sweeping. Yeah. That's a great attempt. Yeah, good hit and roll that one. Finally, finally, we've uh, seen the shot actually called, played. And the gap between us is pretty small. It's quite difficult for Thomas to, to blank this. Yeah. I mean, really, it should be regulation, but he's got to catch a half stone. Half stone in the front one, yeah. We've seen we've seen heavier stones run out, yeah, uh, or at least not draw. The run out's maybe too strong, but certainly not draw. So I think the way the stones are lined, 
he's going more over the top here. Yeah. But it's maybe just his preferred handle. I would have been an outturn hit here all day long. Um, especially when we've been watching the outturns down this track. I'm, I'm slightly surprised he's taking this hand. Who might have questioned the great man? Cool, calm and collected. And turn big hit. Yeah. I think yeah. they like it. Yeah, yeah good never shot. in doubt. Yeah, good shot. Makes it look easy. Under control all the way down, so a tight end. Thomas's his team just did the bare minimum and they'll be happy to take the blank. Move on. Yeah, nobody taking too many chances there, uh, regulation end, but looks regulation when all the teams play 100%, so that helps. Nobody really got that killer hit and roll early enough. So all our results will be on the perthmasters.com website and also on the worldcurl.com website where you'll be able to see the all three draws. A draw, B draw, C draw, laid out. These are the top A teams, all one with one win and no defeat. So <laughs> you advance pretty quickly along the sections if uh, if you keep winning. I know you. Yeah. <laughs> and we have on one of the sheets. We actually have one of the first Olympic team lineup matchups here. We've got uh, Nicholas Eden from Sweden against Morozumi from Japan. So a chance to, chance to test each other's form with the Olympics five weeks away now. I'm sure there'll be more and more of these matchups over the rest of the weekend. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? That uh, you're going to hit a good team at some point. And that's actually why they're here. They're, they're here because they want to play uh, top teams. They want to play against uh, their rivals and test them out and very nice conditions. Um, the nice conditions here won't be so dissimilar to uh, uh, in Korea, Nyeongchang. There will be arena ice here. We've got lots of curl here. It'll be a similar speed. Um, the one difference is it's eight ends. That makes a difference. And also it's a elimination triple knockout rather than a, a group section to start with. So the end started pretty similar to the first end where uh, the Norwegians have gone for a corner guard. This time it's closer and wider. Yes, certainly very wide in that intern hand there. Callum Kinnear playing the uh, draw to the bottom of his first. He's just gone a little bit deep the second. We'll have a look at that. That's yeah, they've agreed it's in. Ah, uh, we'd be disappointed, but don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it might be about half a centimetre too big. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hard. Hard. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, it might pop this behind the corner. Not quite. So no disaster for either team. I think Ewan will be happy with the outcome he's of the two skips. He's got a centre guard. It's not his own colour, admittedly, but uh, he's got a centre guard. If he can come round this, he's in good position for the force rather than the steal. Yes. They like the weight. Yeah. Chunk of ice again. It's going to have to finish a lot from the hog line in, but they seem to like it. They're still on uh, sweeping on David Edwards' side at the moment, so in other words, it's curling. Yeah, both going on it now. A chance to get this round. Not going to be terribly deep, I don't think, but they're it's great, great line. Yeah, really good line in there. Yeah, good shot. Yeah, that's pretty good there. It's uh, top of the house. If, uh, if they'd come an awful lot deeper, perhaps it might have made the double and the roll behind the corner easier, so taking no chances, making sure they get the centre guard off. So I think that was 
even if you're on the high side here, you might get the double, but if it's going to come onto the nose, we'll get the straight run back onto the shot. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Impressive grasp with the Norwegian. He went as good last night with the Norwegian team. <laughs> Crash course overnight. I've been learning. A wee bit on the high side. Yeah, just a shade high and uh, just takes the one, but gets that centre guard off. With that red stain in play, I don't think Uno really want to be throwing a guard unless he just yeah. half checks the top one, but a bit of a gamble at second end. He's just got to swap that stone for a yellow one and keep going for the forced end it probably wants to get some separation between them leave no double here no, so no double and nor anything that can lead to the simple shot again that ran that wide corner guard yeah hit and roll away from the corner away to the other side of the sheet try and make the double as hard as possible but he wants to keep in play he doesn't want to spin at all I did. Good dog. Good throw. Yeah, pretty decent. Although it's left a straightforward double, it's not going to leave the red counter in a dangerous position for them. So quite defensive start from both teams, but yeah. really it's because they're uh, they're playing all the shots. Yeah, a bit heavier than so what they were looking so for. This is up, up higher than they thought. This might jam. Yep, it has. And jammed in a good position for Team McDonald. It's out the way there. Get some separation now. Yeah. It makes the force look more likely. Doesn't really want to go around the corner guard, though. No. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, them taking no chances. There's a great chance here for uh, Ewan McDonald to uh, to get the force on. Um, yeah, just put it right yeah. in the button. Wouldn't have been daft. Here. I think Yoon's trying to do both here. He's trying to take that corner off and roll in the house to lie too. I don't like him going round the corner. I think like that more. Okay. Full control. Skip's Go. getting his way. I mean, I think if they don't get the roll into the house here, then they're kind of throwing away a great chance to force a one. Yeah, he's going to be careful. Just doesn't roll. Parse it towards the house and leave and leave a, a corner, a better corner guard yeah. than Thomas has got at the moment. Maybe a little bit old school these tactics actually. If you think about it. A lot of the, te the teams nowadays are a bit more attacking. Yeah, I think I'd be uh, even just putting it in the forefoot and saying, right, if you want your two, you're going to have to earn it. I don't like the sounds of that. That sounds like nose hit corner. Mm, there we go. So now he's improved it because he's manoeuvred it near the centre so that if Ulsrud comes round that, he'll be lying the shot. I think if he'd gone round it, round the red, he wouldn't oh, actually have been that. beating yeah, the yellow. So wide to be that yellow. Oh, Chan small chance, small mistake there, I think, by David Edwards. Yeah, I think it was the call that was the problem rather than the execution. Still... Torgor Nergard has to make the shot, and that looks a bit hot to me. So the sweeper's indicating that they're ste Hello. stepping back. They don't like the look of this one at all. I think that's through the oh back. I think that's beyond. Yeah, beyond. Oh, he's missed that by a long way. Yeah, that's resting on the hack. Yeah. Beat us to the punchline, I think there. Yeah. <laughs> Asking Hugh McDonald to be careful, it might break his brush. It's hope for us all. These are the, these are the best curlers in the world, and Torgar has missed his draw by about 20 feet. Yeah. Well, especially when you think these boys can sweep, sweep it. it along. Yeah. An interesting call here, and uh, going for the split here. So they're trying to develop both stones into the house. I think part of that is uh, it takes the corner guard off, part one, and uh, it, it makes it a real force end because they they have to lift two doubles to avoid the to get the blank. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 
wouldn't be too worried about where this the played stone finishes. They, they want to make sure that the shooter rolls and get rid of this corner. He's pretty perfect. Yeah, good effort. That's a pretty yeah, tough that. shot, especially coming off that right turn hand. Yeah. I think as long as he had two yellows in the house, he's developed a centre as well, which has made the steal actually on as well. So, um, yeah, one slight mistake from Torger Nergard, and it's uh, turned the end around. Oh. Stick your name. Stick your name. So are you okay? No problem. Yeah. Just playing the dead draw. He had the option of the hit and roll off the the right hand or the left hand yellow as we look at it going right across the sheet, but if you're going to try and put a stone there, you might as well draw. Plus, 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 plus. Does leave the straight run back for McDonald. Plus. Yeah. Plus. He's thinking that he's got, he's got three shots to get this right. I think what this says is they've just given up on the blank now. They've, they've yep. got to try and get their two out of this, and if they get a force, they get a force. again. Oh, wow. He's corrected it, but not by much. That's a big... Big couple of mistakes by Norm are there. So yeah. if Ewan can capitalise here, put one for David Edwards, just tapping the brush. Yeah. I've got a wee bit more curl in there. Yeah. The steel's looking very much as a strong possibility. Yeah, they're very relaxed. I mean, they're not every skip would have been as amenable as that. Yeah, two absolute rickets <laughs> from Torger there, and uh, still they're they're smiling and. Uh, but you know, I think that's uh, maturity and uh, experience of relationships, and there's, there's nobody knows more than Torga that that was a mistake. There's no point telling him. He's got another uh, 14 stones to throw. So I'm just doing my math there. I'm yeah, counting on an extra right. end. <laughs> good chance for Team McDonald here. Yes, yeah, it's a great chance now. It was a good shot by David Edwards to, to put them in that position. Compounded by the mistake, but uh, really oh, good chance now. Where is he? Okay. It's deep, isn't it? Be open, so make sure we're on the line. Yeah, beyond the T, yeah, maybe yeah. just. Yeah. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I like I like the fact that if you're going to be open, make sure it's deep, so that uh, if you ends up going nose or slight roll, you can actually get the freeze on it. If you come up to high of T and it's open, it's worse. Thompson so just try and pop this one through the back. I don't, th I don't think he's elected the freeze. I think he's called the tap through. Yeah, at that at that ice, it looks like uh, certainly they were taking double the ice and that for the draw. So tap it and even slightly roll to one side. I don't know if he really wants to be behind the centre one. I think he probably would rather be rolling out to the wing showing just half and it, oh it's making his last draw easier he should in theory then have the whole of the eight foot to get his one guess if it nestles in the four foot in the pocket there it's going to give you mcdonald an a one chance yeah Drawing. Yeah, it's drawing a lot more than the other ones. Just a bit light, I think. Yeah, did it, we'd only just have got that uh, stone cleared through the back ring there, I think. So yeah, oh. he was caught in between the two shots. He either he either pops it through the back, or he or he plays the dead draw, yeah. and it was neither one or the other. He's, he's done well. He's moved it far enough away. Ewan's going to try and. Yeah, take it's, this out. It's a force end here. Yeah. You can afford to hit and roll. So Thomas is going to have the four foot to hit with his left final. Yeah. Control. Playing a little okay. bit of control, hoping he hits and sticks. Dave Edwards just asking Ewan McDonald okay. if he's happy with the ice. I mean, we've not played down this track, actually. Uh, certainly not a downweight strike. So the sheets are consistent here at I Perth. think so. They did. They played here often enough. Firm barrier. Oh, yep. Yep. 
Yeah, we never, never, never seem to see a bit where it's completely different from the, the other seven sheets. Great action shot there. Roll the same. Control throw. Yeah. Nice throw. Good shot. So. Yeah, and just about biting part of the four foot, just making him think about the uh, the draw. He's still going to make it. It's up against the four four yellows now. Just play a dead draw on the open side. No point asking Torger for the split. He's going to have to do it on his own. There was the option of uh, of coming to rest on the the red that's nearest the centre, but it's not easy coming down that out turn because it will draw at the end. So almost a freeze onto it's not on so he's going to play just a cold draw into the four foot into the gray circle there i should know the ice high margin of, of error here he well this is the same intern handle that he played his uh, practice stone and his draw shot challenge stone before the game started live so he should be comfortable with this so he put it right on the button with that with his number eight stone so he's playing the number eight again they should know this track pretty well. It is just for a one, but you'll be pretty focused on the fact that there's four counters lying around. I've heard Pedersen on it early. Yeah, just, just to keep it moving, I think, at the moment. Yeah, I think they're worried about the weight, but the weight's fine. Christoph stood up there, down, back down. I think the, they're liking it now. Perfect. Yep, pretty good. Good end of curling, actually. Good stone from uh, David Edwards playing that split, turned the end around, but uh, Two, two poor draws from uh, Norwegian third. Asked to skip a few questions. That's him getting his admonishment now. Yeah. Yeah, McDonald will be happy. He's played two tight ends and uh, got the force in early. We'll see how easy it is to try and generate a two. Seen across the sheets there, the all the games in action. We're obviously uh, under time clocks here for the television game. We're in the now recognisable and autograph multicoloured. Uh, Loudmouth trousers, Team Norway, if those of you watching black and white are playing with the red stones. Beauty of those trousers is that they match every stone in every ice rink around yeah. the world. <laughs> Perfect first up stone, nice and tight, right splitting the centre line there, so there's a draw on both hands. Ian McDonald will go for the corner guard on the left hand side of the sheet here. Callum Kinnear throwing the out turn draw. We hope to have it wide enough that that's not blocking the route in. Great experience for Callum. He's obviously plays in all the under-21 slams and the junior competitions around Europe, um, but normally skips. So it's it's not often that he'll be playing lead stones at any uh, stage of his curling career now. So. It's a great chance for him to learn the game lower down the rink and get an appreciation for where top skips actually want their lead stone. So we are real education for him. Thomas going straight in with the number two stone here. Yeah, just a pound light, but a nice line in there. They got the, they're getting the ice right down that outturn side now. Um, He's make a good it. shot. Look at that picture. Yeah. Great coverage, getting the close-ups, getting the action replays. Yep. Hey! Didn't 
doesn't sound good from his hand. Uh, can only probably see half stone, but sounds like he's probably on the guard. Yeah, I think that was maybe just a way. Little light, little tight. I think the sweeper's working hard. Like we've given up on it now. So. Trying to get it across the top. But weight was probably okay. It looks like it's popped it back. Of course, he's not allowed to remove that. Can't so go all the way through. That's yeah. right. So Twixt in between for you in there to know whether to sweep that through and, and have it replaced. Or to try and leave it in the rings and okay. line two against. Anyway. Just these, these, as you said, as you said two minutes ago, Rob, the, learning the lead's craft as well is as, as important as the skip's craft as a former lead. I've always said that. <laughs> it's a lead's game. Yeah, roll reversal this time, so Team Oldred's got the chance to even steal here. Yeah, control the end. I think you know, have to play some run backs in these front front two yellows to try and get out of this end because he's going to be facing three here in a minute. The one this one's slightly deeper than the last one. Oh, he's perfect. That's a super shot. That's probably the best come round we've seen. Yeah. Outside chance of taking two of the reds here if he catches the yellow on the high side on the on the intern here. Half stone and try and catch it across the face. He'll be happy just take one I was probably. Say, there's a chance to take all four. Take <laughs> take everything here. Super player Duncan Fernie. Very much underrated, I think. Yeah, very consistent. Maybe just on the high side here, I think. Yeah. Just flicked it when he put the handle on it, yeah. then he just kept it out there. Commentator's curse. He had no chance the minute you uh, said complimented player, him. That's right. But it's taking the guard off and the shooter, so. You and you signed up now for a hitting end, I think, here to try yeah. and get out of here, so. Plenty of time to pick up other doubles. Not be easy. He's now going to be driving red into red, so. And this one will probably end up being longer. Needing it to curl a lot, though. You see the way Torg are sweeping that on the. On the inside half of the stone, inside try, and track, yeah. try and develop a curl. Yeah, he's popped that back a long way. Well, curled at the end, but. Not yeah. enough, I think. Uh, left Duncan a better chance now for a double. All very relaxed. I mean, a pretty poor release, and they're all still uh, having a bit of a joke about it. But part of that's just to settle your teammate down. That the teammate knows he's furious with himself and just to try and relax the teammate. No real point getting head up after the event. Yeah, Good chance to get the double, but it looks like it's going to jam this. It's on the high side at the moment. Looking for some draw that's just not yeah. coming yet. He's lifted two of them, though. He's taking the front one and the back one. Taking the pressure off slightly. Still all the cards are in Thomas Oldswood's hands. He's got the chance of this hit and roll across. With Just hearing Hugh McDonald saying it never moved. He threw it quite well. So Chance here for Torger. We've had a few hits down this line now. Playing that hack weight. Oh, that's got a curl. It's got the other hand. Yeah. That's the difference, the... The out turn looks straighter, but when you throw the in turn down the centre line, it fairly draws. Ah, he's close. So, a chance of a double, or do you go for the shot that you can see it all? Hit and roll right across, so we can still get two here, is what he's thinking. Yeah, no thoughts of double. He's thinking of the two behind the yellow corner guard. Any roll inside is good here. Half stone, sit in front of the red would be a, a good shot too. Controlled weight, so... Change their minds and going for the double now, trying to get it just off nose. Yeah. Just getting caught on the same line yeah. as we had in the first end, where the out turns not swing as much as other lines on the, on the sheet. Yeah, they've got an option of coming back in again or throwing another guard up. 
Just asking how much of it can you see. You can see it all really on the outturn hit. So either guard it or come into the front speed. ring and leave them half and half. Oh, yeah. I think the initial call was guard, but don't worry if you come right in. Draw Wade, he's still taking plenty of ice. I mean, that's still... Uh, he's just looking to get this top 12. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> the early call from... Uh, Thomas Ulrich, just to say that he's on the high side at the moment, so the boys like it for weight though, so they're wanting to work it. Just looking to swing it in to finish now. I think he's pretty much exactly where Thomas tapped his brush on that one. Yeah, that's perfect because uh, it's guarded the shot and also it's added another counter in there. Yellow can only just be used as a drive up option now as well. He's pretty, pretty pretty good spot. Yeah. So I think uh Ewan recognising the danger here. How it's lying. He's just gonna try and use the red guard. Yeah, so he's calling to roll the shooter to the left hand side of the sheet as we're looking at it. So he's not worried about trying to drive it in for the double. If he picks one of them on the way past, that'll be enough. He's all worried about uh, how he's gonna get his last stone in here in this two corner guards stopping his path to the four foot at the moment, so yeah, he's got one yeah. of them. That's all he could do there, really. And his guards well out of trouble as well. So. Better. Yeah, it's better, but it's not an easy route for his last. I suppose the intern, like you say, that guard rolling far enough has left the intern drawn. Thomas will go centre. You want to keep it quite tight because he doesn't want to give them half a chance of catching corner stone and yeah, rolling behind corner the guards. guards yeah. Har du noe bedre forslag hvis du drar inn så får du floppe alle mulige veier. Tight guard, akkurat krysset senter. Gjør den en scroll der, så får vi en, en kort en tilbake da. Yeah, I just reminded the guys that not to leave this too long. He wanted a tight guard. So, plenty of ice. Nice up and close. He can afford to be just on the center line here. Leave half a gap's okay. He doesn't need to be uh, perfectly lined up. Classic release. All about the line really here. Boys have got control of the weight, they'll take it a long way. Keep, keeping his head up here to, to make sure it keeps on that side of the line as much as it can. Yeah, that's pretty much where they would have placed it if they could have walked down, so. Yeah, they've got the, the lines of the ice now. All perfect now, they're throwing the stones where they want them. Chance for the run back here for Ewan, or... Use the one that Thomas just played to take out the one at the top of the forefoot there. Yeah, there is nothing else, he's, he's got to play this shot, it's... It's too good to try and outdraw it at the moment. So a two-fold uh, challenge here for him, he's got to try and pick the one off the top of the forefoot, but also roll the plate stone out of play as well. He doesn't want to jam the red that he's about to play in behind the double corner guard at the same time, so. Out, I think, on that one. That one's yeah, big rotation to keep it straight. Yeah, just always a bit high there with the way through it. Just that bigger weight, he had to bigger kick off the hack and slight wobble. So a similar kind of shot, I mean, I think the temptation is to possibly bite the front of the rings and just add on a bit of pressure because yeah. Yuno will probably be tempted to draw this time, so. It's not an easy draw, though, if he gets this guard right. See, I think Thomas has got a chance to just, just tuck in behind the yellow there. So yeah. Ewan can only see a tiny bit of the short stone and 80% of the front stone. As Rob says, then the draw to the button becomes your best option or you're just hitting to only lose a one. The other option they're talking through is uh, playing the out turn to the edge of the four foot where if he gets the nose hit on it he's not shot on either of them so leave two two stones in play where if you hit either of them they're not uh, they're not counting shots so that's the one they've gone for. Um, 
halvvägs runt men då är det fort att inte körle helt upp då när det är så kort avstånd och får den. This is a real precision shot. Tears because it certainly half a stone wrong. That leaves the unit double. Yeah. But it's still a force. They'll be relatively comfortable if it's only a one, so. Chance for still here would have been nice, though. Just how you see it as a skip. Where you, where you like to be in the game, whether you like to have the hammer. Or, or a bigger winning margin. Leading margin. Tight. So the call is just sitting on top of T line here. If he's deeper than T, then uh, it's a nose hit for the shot. It's going to curl too much, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a good weight. Just about exactly what he wanted, but it's uh, just over curled. So a nose hit from Ewan McDonald gets the, gets the one, and Oldrude's probably comfortable. And after it's the force end, he gets the hammer back on four six and eight so he's in control he maybe wasn't too happy about just being two up without the hammer and four so like you say it's hammer management at this stage of the game the the steals are for later on in the game still you mcdonald's still going to make it yeah, no, not easy. This is the, the, the Reds end up in a, almost a catcher position if he is a touch high, um, and, and David Ayres would have to react to sweep it for that. He'll be no more than barrier here. Russia should be able to hold it down that track. In fact, I think he is more than barrier here. Soft strike, I would call that. Not much noise from either end. Curl. Uh, see, that was the one. They, an earlier yeah. call there. Just a bit heavy, I think. Could have used that catcher. Yeah. I think they did put the brush on late, but... Yeah, well, advantage Norway. Yeah, well, he's got his steel after all. It was an unusual way to get the steel. Always kept the pressure on the opposition skip, and... Yeah, that's just what you were saying. The boys are talking about it, that they were... Uh, they swept to get it to swing more, and actually, if they could have kept it a little bit straighter, then they could have lifted the double, either for the blank or for the uh, yeah, force. Yeah, right, ricocheted into that one and taken their one. But they never anyway. really contemplated that there was an outside chance of a blank there, but it's only a two short lead, so Team McDonald won't be too despondent at the moment. They've got Hammer on even ends, so. But certainly advantage Oldrood at the moment. Yeah. He's uh, probably dominated the first three ends. I think the percentages of the teams will be relatively even at the moment with Oldrude outperforming McDonald, and it's the skips game at the end of the day. Yeah, I think that's the only difference at the moment. I think we'll see Havard Pedersen go a little bit deeper. He'll probably be in the rings with this one. He'll not. Um, he'll not feel the need to. Uh, he'll not feel the need to go uh, centre guard crazy now that they've got that two shot lead. I think go back to the old formula here. Put this one in. Assume a corner guard's coming. You might see two corners this time, Alan. So going to the uh, intern side of the sheet this time. I think Ewan maybe thinks that there's an easier way to develop the corner with uh, where the red is sitting. Maybe a bigger swing as well, you think, Alan? I think once you're inside the center tapes here, they're, they're, they're definitely going. Yeah. That's nice and wide there. I like That's it out there. Shot. Nice and tight, nice and wide. Good shot, Callum. Maybe just you and recognizing that it was the out turn that he turned in a little bit at uh, N3, so put them on an in turn just to give him a little bit of a change. I think he's probably wanting to short the rings, but it's right up tight to the stone, so they're going to be quite close together. With, with, a, with a usable angle for Ewan as well. There's yeah. a chance to get straight in behind the corner here. He'll probably still leave a red in the forefoot or just outside the forefoot. 
I think David Edwards there uh, just called the dead draw. So I'd be trying to bump these back a little bit minimum. Shot over his shoulder there, Work Callum right. Slide. Yeah, terrific yep. angle. Great yep. coverage we're getting this week from yep. the boys at World Curling Television. It's going to be heavy here. Just done feathering that red if he was being told it was heavy. Yeah, just, really. just a pound, not really too bad. Yeah, I don't mind that too much. I think they're going to probably take the corner guard off here, so. I was sitting disgusted because when I was on the hat, I thought to myself, even if you throw it firm, you're always going the side. Like, if you see this out, it's just. Yeah, Ewan and uh, David Edwards yep, still yep. talking about that last end when they regretted yep. maybe not going for the double high. when they had the when high. it stayed high. So straightforward peel. Yeah, no mistakes from Christopher Svies, as good as anybody in the game at the peeling. You know, persist at the corner guard, yep. just trying to create an opening here where they get a chance of a two. They know there's a relatively easy double on the top two reds, so at the moment it's almost acting as if it's one stone in the house. I think we're tight. We're not bad. We're not bad. Oh, oh, tight. Trying to draw into the face of these two, pop one of them back. Was that the call? I think the call should have been corner think, guard. I think he called the corner guard. I, I think he had to. I didn't quite see what he said there. But yeah. uh, it was coming down at that weight. I thought he'd kind of played the bump yeah. weight. Maybe right. It's not oh, a good shot. Hold, Griff! Hold! So he's just seen uh, six inches between them. So straight weight. Anywhere on the inside, they'll both spring. They're quite near the outside. I don't think he'll be lighter weight with this one. Wait. Must be close to nose. Yeah, yeah really good shot. Nicely. Yeah, they've missed a chance oh, the corner, so I think uh, the tap back oh, shot that you called the last time, Alan, is the one that they'll be going for now. It's too early in the end just to bail out completely and go blank, but they can still develop a two if they can pop these two back and create a weave a basket to come into towards the end. So just back eight weight here. Just pop them back onto the T line if you can. Must keep their yellow in play. Hopefully in front of one of the two reds. He's running out of line a little bit. I think he's okay. He's trying to just bounce the two together to try and create a bigger, wider gap. Yeah, just overcrawled a wee bit, didn't it? Well, it wasn't terrible. Uh, ask the question how to get rid of the yellow. Yeah, they're using these yellows to get rid of uh, more reds as well. So it's a kind of game that uh, Ewan McDonald's playing, but it's hard to get twos without guards. Two, yeah. Yep. Yep. Hard over. Push. Hard on. Hard on. Yeah, that's swinging over onto the nose. Good enough, though. Good enough. Keep the shooter. Yeah, the difference is that uh, they're calling the sweeping so early that even when they know it's about to come, they're sweeping it when it's already before it started to break. So the stones are quite springy here. So yeah, any contact they tend to pop. Good call from you and though, still persisting with uh, the attempted freeze, trying to force the error. Many teams would just be uh, playing for the hit here to re-rack them and go for the blank and start again but the other thing that keeps the concentration of the team up keep forcing your teammates to play 100% shots just keeps the focus this might just be popping it a wee bit it's not the worst thing to just knock it back a little bit onto the beyond the T line oh it was a wee bit high that's a quick shot there Tom Probably just too heavy. I think, and yeah, and some of this is just boiling down to lack of match practice, I think, for some of these guys. An early call there, Ewan might be able to respond slightly, but I don't think they ever really shouted down that it was no. as big as that. 
Callum was waving his hand that it's uh, that it was an up weight, but you actually need to let the skip know exactly how much it's an up weight. Yeah. That was almost hack. You're joking with Thomas that it was the same line that Nerger <laughs> through his through. It's obviously a real hot line there. Yeah. So just uh, Team Norway trying to keep them as wide apart as they can. Both level on the centre line here. They will, they will want to be on the T line here. Yeah, not brilliant set up for the steal, obviously, but uh, thinking now that they can get the force. Take the hammer. Probably just a little bit too high. Good chance of a double here for David Edwards. Not too much of a concern for Torger. Yeah, we are trying to force a one. Needs the curl. Mm, silent strike. We might go for the steal now. No, nope. no, still, still S persisting. Spreading the stones. Yeah, you can see why. I mean, he he goes centre guard. You're still leaving the double, and if he makes the double, he's behind the guard that you've just thrown up. So they're not uh, taking any chance at the There's moment. No chance. They'll try and draw. The other option would have been to come quite tight, come right up to the eight foot and put it out there and say, well, you're going to have to lift a double and you might not actually be the shot. Uh, leave it close enough so that uh, the, the, the red on the left-hand side of your screen that. would be counting, yeah. This is a more percentage shot. He's got a bigger margin for error. Anywhere in play, really. There's not going to be a treble on, so the force is still going to be there. Perfect skip stone, he's managed the end well, he's leaving himself an easy shot. But we've probably had two misses here from uh, Tim McDonald that set his th three reds in the line here. That yeah, it's pretty good there. Yeah, go for whichever double you want, but you're not getting all three. Even then, they're not easy doubles. Yeah, six, yeah. six feet between them. Yeah, and and you're always enticing them to go for a stone that's third shot. So um, Ewan's ignoring the doubles. He's got two draws to get his one here. So he's still thinking he's got a chance of a two here. If he plays the draw perfectly, then uh, ulfrid has got to move it a long way if he's frozen perfectly. I was thinking that at least, don't he? Because I think there's three tennis before, wasn't it? He got... Yeah, they're just questioning this line. Okay. Talking a 310 split, so obviously they're thinking it's think maybe so, is a quicker track here. We've seen well, both exactly thirds be a bit hot like with their drawer coming down here. The one thing is, if he's uh, he doesn't want to be short here, and either those would may call his bluff and throw a guard up, and then suddenly he could be losing a one. But they're on it straight away. We're talking 310 for the split, which is the, the, the speed or the time it takes to go between the T line and the first hog line. Yeah, it's done just as I suggested that he's from come where I'm light. sitting, I tried to time it and got it as much slower than 310, so yeah. that's why that's what just pulled up short. That was the problem. They'd almost talked themselves into the fact that it was a quicker line, and now they could be facing a four with one absolutely nailed on the button. Maybe so two oh, nailed on the button. Yeah. He puts one in there. There's no harm in coming right in here. I, I, you're, you're, you're asking, he's going to have to draw, so... And actually, if you, if you come so far in that you're almost at the top of the four foot, he's, he's only got the double off the outside one. Yeah, you come. If you leave the guard too long, where uh, I can either, you, you can play either hand. So yeah. there's no point putting a, a short guard on because no. the other hand's open. The, the so outturn is still on. I think he's got to come right in the four foot here. 
Yeah, yeah, just for the just for the brushes there. Yeah. Maybe even slightly closer to the button for me. If, if, if you come closer to the button though, Alan, you've, you're maybe fattening up the double off the outside red. So they'll be thinking maybe keep a little bit of a separation. But just, just pressure of stones and yeah. scoring position sometimes is good enough. Fully in the forefoot. Yeah. And the advantage they've got is they've probably got a, a bit of a split on Ewan's stone as well. So. Torger's indicating that they're quite happy with this top 12, but I like it right in. Problem if you come right in and don't get right in, you could potentially leave quite straightforward straight forward nose hit. Point. Yeah. Half and half would be good. Half round, half open is what I mean. He's played a lot of draws, so he'll have a good control of the weight, probably more than any of the other players at the top end, so. Thinks it's all there. High for line as well. Don't leave a nest for you. Oh, if this is if this is T weight, it's a gift for you and but chewing in now. It's still a bit of a gift. Tom! Well, nose hits one against, but uh, slightly high of nose. Control weight for the yeah. take the double. You've got, again, you've got to make sure you don't flick it outside and roll in behind that left one and yeah. give them an easy two. He's got to just play it with an element of control so it stays in the white in the eight-foot circle. Yeah, I mean, from here, losing a one against the head is probably not great, but it's not as disastrous as it was looking maybe early in the end. Well, he's, uh, he's still... Uh, He's still line four with two in the four foot. I think, I think it's a difficult shot to lift the double and keep it in the eight foot. It is there. It is there, but he runs the risk of just running out of room over yeah. to my right hand side there. That's a tough but, shot. But, but the alternative isn't any easier. These are the shots that Ewan can make. He spent a, a long time of his career playing second and third and having to make these. Um, there's no easy shot here. There's an easy shot to lose a one. Yep, or you can play the outturn draw cold. Yeah. Tap that one back, but again, not, not easy, but you might like, still lose a one out of that. This is a high tariff shot, this, though. Well, this is the game here. I was going to say, this is the first match point, isn't it? You don't want it to be quiet. So, uh, Donkey's hitting enough of that, is no, he? No, too thin. Steel of three. Steel of three. Looking down to see what the. I think doing. what. I think what. Uh, what the mindset is there is that even losing a one, they can't see a way back against a team as strong as Oldrude. To go three down in a four-end game is uh, almost impossible. So they had to get a one. Uh, and they thought that was their easiest way yeah. of getting a one. Um, so, big turnaround. Difference of 2-1 down and 5-0 uh, is a uh, swing of six shots there. Swing of four shots there. I was never at school long enough. I was too to your maths again, Rob. Yeah, too long hanging around in ice rinks. Not been at school, but uh, so we'll probably see some defensive stuff now from Team Mildred. And uh, the kitchen sink will be getting thrown out here from McDonald. We'll see lots of guards in play. So be likely to be three guards to begin with. Been a pretty clinical performance from Thomas Oldridge himself. He hasn't missed a shot at all, and he's managed the game very well in terms that he's just left himself regulation draws so to, to the open side. So definitely, the art of a good skip is to leave yourself the easiest shot possible. Yeah, I mean, you can come off the ice here today and say, "Well, we never made uh, Thomas Oldridge play a shot." Well, actually, he managed that himself. Yeah, he's moved the stones around into easy posi easier positions for himself. Yeah. 
They don't all have to be barnstorming. No. Shots to win games. I'm trying to try and teach that to the juniors. The juniors love playing the big shots, don't they, to win games. Yeah, they're there for practice. So two corner guards, one on each uh, WCT World Curling Tour sign yeah. would be perfect. Possibly a little bit long there, isn't it? You'd like it a little bit closer. Yeah, but Callum just looked down at the ice as he let that one go. He maybe seemed to yeah, got a grab as soon as he let it go. Suspicious look, wasn't it? Yeah, we'd have seen an, an awful lot of teams uh, throwing the second stone through here, but no, no let up from Team Norway. They're going to put both of them in the four foot circle. Yeah, they probably feel five is a big enough margin. They don't need to be as cautious as all that. They yeah. I think actually he's probably gone too deep. That's overthrown anyway. But yeah, probably not a bad stone for Ewan to use at some point in the game. Might be all he's got. Across the other side here, I think. Yeah, they probably, although that first one I thought was a little bit uh, long, they probably still want to then have to make this level. They, they don't yes, want to. Right. They don't want to go perfect with this one. I mean, there's going to be big separation between them because they're certainly wide enough. But there's an outside chance of double here for Team Oldrud. Second one's actually very well positioned, but yeah. uh, not not in relation to where the first one is. Yep, hard. Third of the stone, maybe lift the double. Yeah. They like it, so it must be close. Oh, oh dear, there's a mistake. Just turned that in a wee bit. It wasn't a great slide, and then almost when he put the outturn handle on it, he popped yeah. it in. So what do you do here, Alan? I quite like the intern right round them all, or do you use the corner when you've got the chance? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's obviously looking at, he's almost got to be thinking more than a two, hasn't he? Yeah. Is, is, is the problem, if it was a, if I think it was a, a two he was looking for, yeah, the corner guard is, is Yeah, right you just now. go round your own one, but. As you say, he's, he's, he's got to play, yeah. he's more unconventional tanks here, to try and work a three out of these ones. I think he's playing just yeah. to pop back the, the front red and then get in behind the corner that you suggested, but I'm wondering that front red still might end up being a friend where it is. We've seen this line a few times now. Yeah, so that's very still, close to the guard. Still not really mastered it, I don't think, has he got around it? He's got around it. That's a pretty decent effort. Okay. Well, he's there, but... It wasn't where he wanted. I would have thought Tor um, Thomas will be wanting to move a guard here, but he's looking at the open hit at the moment. Playing a controlled way. Like you say, they're five up, so probably not too worried at the moment, even if they give away a two. Yep. Yeah, I like the guards too. Maybe Thomas is trying to leave himself a harder shot. Maybe he needs the practice. Well, His team has said, no, let's try and keep it more simple than that. Well, I think they've got to think about what's the real danger stone here. And the one that Duncan Fernie's just played is not going to be the stone that kills this end. The one stone that should be causing them problems is the corner guard. So. Yeah, they're looking at whether they can take the corner guard off and feather the yeah. yellow in the way past. Just checking to see if the outside chance of jamming it on the on the red, which would be the only disaster really, would be if you jam two yellows in there. Which is the beauty of uh, playing the double on the guards. But Skip's got his way. It's more weight than they initially called. They initially called uh, control weight. I think control he weight. He played that number five, the call of five. So yeah. So corner guard definitely usable now. Yeah. Yeah, I like the corner more than the freeze. Yeah. 
The red's quite a long way out that uh, you come round that, he can probably pick it on either hand. So that's one for later on the end when you can bring the freeze into play on the big back red. And Aye. once you're already around the corner. I think if Duncan can get round this, Norway will probably take the corner off and yeah. then give you a chance to go around the other one. Yeah. Sweeper's saying it's all there for weight, so it's only about line. Oh, they didn't have to be that close to the guard. Weight was perfect. Yeah, just again, maybe just a little lack of match practice or team familiarity with having a new guy in the team. Yeah, and different throws as well. That uh, the guys are all all throw it very differently. And uh, although they've played together for three or four years now, that. If they're not playing together every week in, week out, they're all doing their own practices. Yep. Counts a lot. Yep, yep. Pressure back off Norway here. I mean, it's not unusual for teams to all live apart. I was speaking to Joel Retornas, the uh, Italian Olympic skip, how they all live apart, practice on their own, and really only uh, a couple of times a month they're able to get together as a group. Uh, but once the performance season starts, they're playing every weekend. Yes, that's, that's, that's the difference. If that's you're not practicing together, then yeah. you get in yep. match day groove. Canadian teams often play apart as well. I know Glenn Howe's team all live apart whoa, as well. So whoa, whoa. it's uh, it's part and parcel of the game. But the difference is if you're not playing every weekend, then uh, you have to reintroduce Someone yourself every Friday afternoon. Up. I'm just looking down at the sheet. It's not harming Joel returning. He's 3 0 up on Pat Simmons <laughs> uh, on sheet F. Which, uh They're actually a really good uh, outside bet. I mean, they've they obviously won the pre Olympic qualifier and they did pretty well ending mid table Europeans. So they've, they've had a decent season come, coming up on the rails as dark horses. It would certainly be a major scalp to to beat Simmons, hugely experienced team. So again, this same track, uh, the team's just finding nose hit after nose hit. Nobody's prepared to play that real quiet tap back way, are they? And get it to swing, they, they must have seen a dozen stones down that one line now, every time it's been Yeah, to, the point now is that the red's too high up for you and to use to roll behind the corner, so yeah. he's got to make Come a to play on this now. back one now. On the back one or? Fully into the into the four, do you reckon, Rob? Yeah, I like fully in four. I like to. Uh, no, he's calling it the back one. I think Ewan thinks that if he goes fully four, yeah, they've got yeah. quite an easy angled raise on the front red. Whoa, so whoa. It just looks high enough at the moment. It's got a lot of curling to do. Perfect weight. Yeah. Just took its time to curl. I think Torgan Nergard will see all of that stone. Just putting the brush down to indicate how much can you actually see around the guard, and I think you'll see almost all. Just knows it will spring. Play that barrier weight, firm, soft strike, and anywhere on the inside, it's a winner. Yeah, they're just saying, do you want to be hack weight, or do we want to be a bit more than that? It certainly looks ice for hack weight to me. I think so. It's good. Be careful, just. The guard is in his eye line, where it would be more than a real dangerous. He doesn't want to sort of soft it too much and catch that guard. So weight's critical in this one. Is he spectators here enjoying this top quality curling? Brought to you with World Curling Tour and Mercure Hotels. Fantastic having the uh, oh, curling television here this week. So just looking to come up against the yellow one that's just been played. See if you can get it on the low side of it, maybe pop it out. Calling for line early, Alan. Yeah. I think this one might go. Yeah, 
you go, you see, just, just what you said. He just maybe a little bit light. They called it out of their hand. I also knew himself that it was uh, tight for line the minute he let go of it. Yeah, I just turned it in a bit. So a dead draw for the forefoot this time because uh, the angled raise in that front red's not on. He's popped that yeah. centre guard up. So yeah, good chance to get into the into the forefoot or even the one foot here. Yeah, behind the double guard. Does it? Thomas then have to decide whether just to hit hit the back one hard, give away a two, yeah, or go chasing it and risk losing a three. Yeah, I'd quite like to see him go deep here and maybe even back four and just say, well, on you go then. You follow me in if you want, and then it opens up the chance of a three. I think it's well, Tom, Thomas Oldrude will be happy to give away a two gonna, here. Gonna tempt him with a tempt him with the freeze. I think he's experienced enough to avoid that sort of chat. <laughs> Double bluff. Yep. Certainly they want to take it deep and make sure they're hidden. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This one's cutting. Whoa, whoa. Wait, don't leave. Yeah, I think he's perfect. I would take that right round. Pretty good. So here's yeah. Thomas' dilemma now. So yeah, there's no dilemma. There's one shot on. Hit the hit the back one, lose a two. Yeah. Worst case, assuming you makes his draw, which probably will. Do a fancy chasing that one down oh. corner, freezing it. <laughs> I suppose the one thing is if you're uh, if the yellow that Ewan's just played is is not biting the forefoot at all. Thomas would potentially have had a hit and roll to bite the back of the four that might have just uh, yeah, no, made it slightly more difficult. I but think that uh, the one Ewan's just played is... Cracker. Optimal position, yeah. yeah. They've worked hard for their two. They've deserved their opportunity yeah, here. Yeah, with it. They've played some good shots this end. Getting those two guards in place at the end up. Obviously, the, uh, the failure to peel from Christopher Sfar opened the end up for them. Whoa! Well, I'm not sweeping, I think. No. Has he pinged any of it? Got the. Just yeah. Enough. There we go. So, plenty of room for you to draw in for his two, hopefully. Yeah, hold the eight foot. He's just played down this track. The same splits. The stones have been pretty consistent, so. Rosewood will be comfortable that it was only a two. He played the end to defend no more than a two. Yeah, exactly. Had the opportunity to peel guards early and didn't. So one mistake at this level brings a two. Ewan likes it out of his hand. Fine, it's fine. Left fine, it with fine. the sweepers. Fine, it's fine. Not required yet. Four foot. Unswept. Yeah, that's perfect, isn't it? So good to you. Keeps the game alive. Although Oldred three up with Hammer in a three end game will be uh, quite happy. Well, the one thing about playing a steel end, McDonald's going to have to steal three times, but he's um, going to be able to. Uh, Get the two corner guards up first, the two centre guards up, sorry, first, um, before uh, Team Norway can start peeling. So, another dynamic to the game. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter and the, the web feed, so you see the uh, up on screen there. And just another thank you to our uh, broadcasters. World Curling Tour and uh, obviously our main sponsor, the Mercure Hotel Group. All the scores and all the draws are up on World Curling as well as in the Perth Masters site. World Curling Tour gives you a great breakdown of the current ranking points that these guys are all fighting for. Keeps them up in the okay. top 15 to 20, gets the invitation to all the slams. Obviously there's prize money at stake here. But also it's the uh, strength of field multiplier that uh, makes this one of the world top events, certainly the uh, top event in Europe. A 
attempted tick shot here yeah. from Howard yeah. Pedersen. So oh. Callum yeah. Kinnear has played the yeah. perfect centre guard. It's Duncan Fernie staying down to, to sweep the played yellow out of play. So he's quite close here. He's got. Oh, missed it. Yeah, so it's interesting that uh, Team McDonald went for the the centre yeah, of the halfway down the because halfway guard, yeah. it makes it the hardest position to tick it from. Um, but it does mean that uh, your uh, your second guard is harder to play. So this in mind, he's just going for the top of the four foot with his second stone, with Callum's stone. Knowing that uh, Team Norway will probably go tick with the second, they'll hope that if they fail to tick the second, they can get their centre guard up with uh, Duncan Fernie's first stone. I think that's the tactic. Yeah, we looked at this last night when there was a middle guard, yep. mid-length guard. The, the team actually then played the one into the sort of top of the eight foot to get their, their separation. Yeah. It's okay. kind of similar here. Yeah. A wee bit deeper, but... Um, yeah, it's a I mean, great separation there. Um, popped out slightly out the back, so maybe Norway will be tempted to go for the one in the house, knowing that it's going to be difficult to separate the two guards. Yeah. This is an either or, isn't it? What he doesn't want to do is remove yep. the guard totally from play yep. here. Hi. Don't give Ewan McDonald the chance to replace it. Yeah, I think if he just goes with this yep. hack wave, yep. he can take the guard, slide it over. And if he doesn't, then he gets the shot still. Yeah, I think he's on the shot. They've swept for the shot. So. And it's going to keep the red out, out there as well. So they've got a counter in play. Going to persist just playing the one guard game here. Purely because it's so difficult to either parachute one over the hog or get one up tight that's actually going to be useful towards the end of the end. Ewan's going for the maximum separation possible. Put it at the top of the four foot. They'll remove the guard. We can maybe get a better one on. Yep. Yeah, this sounds deep to me. Sweepers are thinking this is yeah. this is a bit far in the house, I think. Chance now. Yeah, the draw's going to take the weight off it. It's coming now, it's so... Coming now. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, it's just exactly behind. It's just about where you would want it placed. So Norway will take the guard off, and Team McDonald will get a chance to put another one up. They're just going to play the one guard, one stone... High end strategy. Yep. Yeah, just the case of replacing the guard, it's uh, probably if they don't get these guards right it's game over because uh, with that extra red counter yes. you fail to make this you lose a two and it's probably too yeah, far I back at 7-2 I, I agree that uh, I think even if Norway score one Norwegian team score one here I think you might say that's enough but, uh, this four down two to play or five. yeah it's it's part of the eight end game isn't it that uh, end six is similar to end eight in a in a ten end game that uh, and also that you're straight back on the ice and Hi, Dave. It's a long, it's a long draw when you could be playing two or three games uh, back to back in this yeah. format. Pick your battles. Yeah. This is an eight road qualifier, so they can still afford uh, a couple of defeats and stay alive. If you're on the ice, you're still in the competition. Perfect guard, though. Yep. Hard, oh man. Hard. Straight on this one. Yeah. His best throw of the day, I don't think. Oh no, he's nosed that one. Taken that one. He's popped it just he's into it second shot, though. Just did enough to get the shots done. I don't think that but was a good throw. He's left no. the centre guard. More importantly, the centre guard's up, so. Real outside chance here. Shake of the head. Rueful smile. Yeah, just going through the options. The dead draw is obviously the easier shot. The, the hit and flop's not all that easy at the moment. The one problem about it coming round is you you leave the angle check straight back onto it. Yeah. 
I mean, they've got a real outside chance here, so there is an element of gamble about where you leave this. You've got to leave a shot of some sort. I mean, almost they don't want to be too good. They could probably leave half this out anyway. Yes, yeah, because they're going to take the centre guard it's off. It's early in the end, isn't it? You're not probably putting your killer stone in here yet. Yeah, the one thing about that stone is that they don't have a shot off their own red. Uh, yeah, good chance to take the yellow out, roll another counter over to the left hand side. The, the pressure's building up, Yun's having to then. I think I'd be taking the centre guard off. Keep drawing and drawing and drawing. Comes down to one stone steel. Yeah, so playing a, a high weight to control the end and just keep two reds in play. And actually, if it over curls here and he feathers the guard, it's not a disaster. It's going to pop a corner guard across there and open the whole end up. Yeah, calling the sweepers off. Certainly uh, into out throw has kept it out there, but... Nice controlled weight, it it'll come now. back. Yeah, there it comes. Got a good now. chunk of it now. Oh, perfect. On the nose. Yeah, so Ewan, well, Ewan That's gives, okay. gives Ewan a chance. Yeah, I mean, it he's really got, does. He's got a, the forefoot still open around that guard just to get the ice right. And there's still a shot in the intern to get the, uh, the hit and check. You'll see great coverage here. Super line of just that stone shave in the guard and uh, coming right onto nose. I think it's probably too good. I think they would prefer to have caught less of the stone and rolled across to the other side. Yeah, there we go. Ewan's called the big... Come big, around them all. The big curver around the back of that one, yep. Yeah, because if you can make this, then the uh, the run back's more difficult. If he comes down on the intern side and rubs off the red that's in the fully in the white, he's Ulsrud's got shots to take it out on both hands. So, Big shot, though. This is the key shot at the end. We said earlier that the, the previous draw wasn't as important I think this is the one that will determine the end. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Run. Run. That's good. That's Duncan's That's Duncan's good. sweep. I know it finishes Run. big here. Hard, Callum. Now they're going Hard, with Callum Run. to try and get develop as much curl as he can at the end. He got it round. Oh, they miscalled that. They were calling room all the way down, and they could easily have been on that. Once it had broken, it really went sideways at the end. Just missed that, didn't they? That just uh, missed call on the sweep. The stone was well enough played. The Shot. ice was well enough called. Again, just maybe lack of match practice rather than ability. Just calling that soft strike. Yeah, chance here. Yeah, nose hit here. No, nose hit difficult. this one makes Ewan's draw around yeah. getting further and further out to the wing, doesn't it? Or he plays the intern. He may be left with just the intern. chance to slide off that one. Yeah. over to the right-hand side there. The shot stone, he could still come off, but... Norway are lining them all up on the top, so he's going to have a choice of yeah, shots. Which one he can promote onto them. Yeah, it's just that. We've got heavier this time. He's yeah, not going to get the tail end, Carl. Ang ang angled it back a touch, I think, again. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Draw the port. Through the, yeah, well. I think I prefer the other one, the intern off the stone. Because if you nose hit it and get just a half check, you're still short. Yeah, just to there. You're going to leave that bump on either stone. Wherever you roll to, he's got the bump. So. Unless we try the same again, grab that and go here. Just still, still got it. Just how he sees it himself. Isn't yeah. It? Which ones you prefer? You which handle? Which draw? I think I think the intern <coughs> draw to the button un, without touching anything's there more easily than maybe drawing through the board. We've just seen that last one crash with a big curve at the end. Yeah. That, yeah, the way that's curling there on the left-hand side of the sheet as you look at it, the outturn draw, it's really narrow port because it's curling so much at the yeah. end. I think I think you've got a bigger margin on the intern. There's, there's a much larger gap with a stagger. And he's got the feather. He, he can afford to almost catch a third of the stone if he has to, and he'd still be lying the shot. Like a hack? Yeah. Probably not even as heavy as hack, but... My worry about being hack here if is if he draw, yeah. if it doesn't draw, it stays nose. If it curls at hack, then he's not keeping the shooter in play. 
Yeah, I thought. Back four weight for me is plenty. So it's a clutch shot. I think he's yeah. kind of got to play the weight, which is the which is one foot weight. Yeah. I think he will be lighter than Hack here. You play Hack, you're committing to playing the the, the split. And yeah. Rolling. Yeah, that's going to curl. That's curling a lot more than they thought. It's not even around the guard. That was okay. Did you touch inside there, Rob, do you think? Or just, just took off? I think it's just taken off. Yeah. Wasn't light, so... No, must, must have gone. Yeah, whether he yeah. rolled it a little bit or... I think Thomas is hitting this. Be going for the roll in himself to the back of the forefoot. One thing about that is there is still a draw through yeah, that port absolutely. to come yeah, onto it. So I'm surprised he's not trying to block up either one of the. the this this port on the right hand side is now closed. So yeah. Draw to the top of the eight foot. He covers the other port that, yeah. was just, that we talked about you trying to get through. I don't see what Ewan's got left apart from a flat double off the one that they're hitting now. That's a, that's a one in ten shot. Probably a, a nose hit or a half roll here is better than the roll into the forefoot. Because even if you leave Ewan the hit and roll, he's got so many counters that can drive on. Ewan's still got that same shot with a half stone roll, but he's got two shots he could drive onto it. Or, uh, or he's got the same shot that he just tried. He could play that hack weight, yeah. bump and roll. I think he'll be lighter with this one though. Last chance saloon, Alan. Uh, I think so. I think I said first match point two ends ago. I would say this is second match point. Or advantage, Ulzrud. You lost the match point. <laughs> Yeah, dead draw, so... And if we, if we flick the wide one, then we'll get it over here, you know? Yeah, flick the middle one if you need to. This is the weight that we were advocating with his last shot, so... Back, back four is good, eh? Yeah, you can afford to be. The deeper, the better, almost. It's making the run back on either of those front two reds harder with more separation, so... And also, if he plays back four weight and he does feather, then it's still going to be uh, into the yep. into the four foot circle. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. So I'm not sure that's Whoa. curling as much as his hack yeah, weight did. So, so he must have turned must it. Have soft handled the first one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> heavy weight needs yeah. a piece. Ah, just a bit heavy. No, too too big, I think. Did yeah, needed to really didn't just didn't draw. I Again, did and did maybe the was there was there clear enough communication as to that weight because you end up you end up feathering the shot as he called. Yeah. If you hit one more inch of that, it was okay. Yeah. Oh, man. It was certainly heavier than he first called when he was uh, on the head, but actually the boys needed to say, "Look, he's almost hack weight yeah. for this again." So I think we'll see just a regulation draw here for uh, for the game. So the scoreline doesn't reflect the uh, game here. The a lot of the ends have been quite close. But probably more of a ref reflection of uh, how much practice the two teams yeah, are. You can hear them shaking hands before that stone actually finished off. So yeah. this, one is, this was done. And that's the shot that Ewan was looking for. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five. So final score of 10-2. But like I say, the yeah. margin wasn't uh, a reflection of the game. The, the ends were a lot closer than that. But uh, probably match practice and 
team awareness came through more and as much as anything else. It's an A-road game though, so Thomas Oldrude will advance the A-road semis and Ewan McDonald will drop down into the B-road. A couple more games today probably. And, uh, already sorting out the dinner plans for right. who's, who's getting the first round in? Yeah. So you just see the key moments were really that uh, three at the fourth end. Uh, score line of 2-1 if Ewan had made that shot. Uh, it was a tough shot he called. Uh, the in wick off the wide one when facing four when really a draw there would have been a one either yeah, way I because he had the old eight foot really to lose a one. So, And when you saw how regulation they managed to get the two back that being three down wasn't a disaster. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, if, if the if the scores matched the way they'd gone, three two down, three ends to play, then you never know. I think uh, it was, it was, it was, I think I said at the time high tariff shot, which didn't quite just work out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is is three zero really uh, so much different to two one without the hammer? So it's uh, they'll maybe look back at that when they play the game back later, sit down with their coach and talk through it. Seeing some of the key shots here that. Uh, Thomas Oldwood himself didn't do an awful lot wrong. He caught one guard from memory. Yeah, I think that was probably his only, only nothing shot everything else. And the game was probably over by then, yeah, to be he honest. Was, as you said at the time, he wasn't one of the others lost in two. I suppose it could potentially have led to a three, but did a conservative shot straight after that to make sure it was only a two. So. Yeah, we're just seeing a couple of the mistakes there that let that three go there that... Uh, left you in playing that big hit and, hit and roll off the outside one and eventually there was just too many reds left. Team McDonald had to gamble big style to try and get back in the game which of course often ends up with big swings and big ends at the end but we've seen two very good teams here and uh, certainly uh, Thomas Oldrud is uh, a real contender for Olympic uh, medals. Certainly will be in the mix at the end of the day when we see him and hopefully we'll get another chance to see him later on this week It'll be hard to see him not making qualifiers so thank you to the coverage of the curling champions tour and world curling television in conjunction with Perth City of Masters 2018 but we'll be back later on in the afternoon Alan and we'll see a, a B-road B-road game between two of the contenders at 1.15 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. We'll speak to you later. Okay, bye. bye.